Hello there, and welcome to Odessa First Assembly's weekly podcast, where we bring you the heart of our Sunday message. I'm Tony, your host and the face behind our digital ministry. We're excited to dive into today's sermon, exploring the Word of God together. So grab your coffee, find a comfy spot, and let's embark on this journey of faith. Without further ado, here's this week's sermon. In the book of Malachi, Malachi chapter 3, I know that's kind of an obvious one. And, uh, you know, I was looking, I was looking for that song and I could not remember the name of that song. And it's, a, you know, I mean, uh, surely I, you've been under a rock if you've never heard that song. But uh, once I finally found it, you know, I've never really paid attention to the words. And so um, th- this is, uh, this is, I guess, uh, um, according to the Jays or whoever it was that sings that song. Here's some of the lyrics. It's pretty interesting. For the love of money, people will steal from their mother. For the love of money, people will rob their own brother. For the love of money, people will lie. They will cheat. For the love of money, people don't care who they hurt or beat. For the love of money, women sell their precious body. For a small piece of paper, it carries a lot of weight. There's a lot of truth of that song. I know you already are. You're, you guys are already quiet. And so, um, I may be a little slow processing, and uh, uh, but I, I was not going to miss sharing this morning. But as I was thinking this week of just really, I mean, we really live in a time, you know, the inflation, you know, the rise of everything. It's just, it's just really crazy. I mean, would you agree? I mean, it really is. And so I was kind of looking up some things. That gas, just in the recent years, you know, sometimes we kind of look back way in the past, but from 2019, and, I, and, and usually, you know, Texas and the Permian Basin, we're usually a little better off, especially when it comes to gas compared to the rest of the country, but in national averages is what we're talking about. In 2019, gas was 263 a gallon, and 2024 through January, the national average is 321 a gallon. Of course, we've seen really even higher than that and in between. Um, However, in 1972, which was before I was born, by the way, 1972, 36 cents a gallon. I do remember when it was like 89 cents a gallon. That's when I first started driving. A new car, a new car in 2019, 37,000, 37,000. In 2024, the average price is 47,000. And there's a whole lot of cars that cost more than my first house. In 1972, a Ford Mustang, $2,500. In today's money, that's um, $31,000. Monthly mortgage, 2019, $1,500. In 2023, $1,800. I found this interesting. Annual cost of child care in 2019, $9,600. In 2023, $10,800. A dozen eggs, 2019. I didn't realize this. 2019, $1.38. 2024, $277. That's at R-H-E-B just right here. In 1972, they were 52 cents. If you're Lee, you get your own eggs, right? They, so <laughs> maybe some of y'all do that. More than 50% of people have had negative impact in their finances since 2020. Over half the people in our culture, negative impact. It's one of the most stressful things that we deal with in life is money. And just as we get started, I really want us to pray because, and I'm going to kind of lay more ground about this. This is not a time for, you know, to shut down and, um, you know, just endure. I really want you to get a hold of the, of the spiritual principle of stewardship this morning. But let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you that in your word, we find full counsel about every area of our life, and we thank you for it. And so I pray that our hearts would be good soil, ready to receive your word. 
We pray in the name of Jesus, amen. So right off the bat, if you're, you know, if you're, um, if you got our notes, you got our notebook, just write off a couple of blanks here we're fixing to look at. You can also follow along version, the Bible lab, if you want to follow along with our notes there. But the very first thing, stewardship is absolutely fundamental in your relationship to God. Stewardship is absolutely fundamental. And please understand, when I say stewardship, I mean, it's, it, it's a, it has a whole lot more to do than just money. But it's in every area of our life, being stewards over our time, talent, and treasures is not based on inflation. What we, what we do with what God has given us is not based on this world system. Come on, somebody help me. What we do with our lives, I mean, our ta- what God, how God has blessed us is not based on a cultural standard, but his word and what he has spoken to us and given to us. You know, in Matthew 19, we read a couple of verses, Matthew 19, 21 and 22, it says, Jesus said to them, if you would be, per- this is right, the, the rich young ruler, which we, we actually preached on last year in a series called Encountering Jesus. But if you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. But the young man, he heard this. He went away sorrowful. Why? Because he had great possessions. And that's really how we see it sometimes. We forget that it's all the Lord's. It's all the Lord's. The Bible says that everything in the, on the earth is his. Everything. But money, it's a number, it's a number one cause of stress. It's a leading cause of divorce, of, of, of arguments in the home. And, you know, there's a lot of people that think money should not be talked about in church. And granted, and, and part of the reason why is that there has been so much damage done in local churches and in the view of maybe TV preachers, and, and it really puts a, a bad taste in our mouth. But I want you to process something just really quick. 11 of the 39 parables that Jesus taught had to do with money. 11 of the 39, matter of fact, I'm sure many of you have heard this before, Jesus talked more about money, stewardship, and possessions than heaven and hell combined. Combined, he talked more about stewardship with our resources. I mean, when I first started pastoring, I I was hesitant to talk about giving him money because I know most people that is immediately they kind of throw up a wall and at times I have found it difficult but I I think I'm at an age and a place I don't find it so hard anymore because what I realize is this is when we catch hold of what stewardship really is it benefits you it benefits you I mean, if, and and real and let me just let me just say this really quick. If you think all we want is your money, then keep it. We don't need it. If if, if that's really your viewpoint, if it, if this offends you that I'm talking about finances, then keep your money because you're giving with the wrong heart anyway. If you think it's all about the if you think it's all the church talks about then keep your money. I can tell you exactly how many sermons I've preached on finances in 10 years. I've preached eight sermons in 10 years on finances. If you think to yourself, that's all he talks about, you know, I'm, I've had people tell me, I'll come to church, but if you talk about money, I'm out. I'm like, well, don't come then. <laughs> I mean, because here's the thing. I, I mean, I, I want to be blessed, but I want you blessed. I want you free. I want you debt free. I want younger generations to learn what it is to fund the kingdom. In the kingdom, there are prophets, priests, and kings. And God has raised up kings to fund the kingdom. And it's all the Lord's anyway. He uses people to bless people. He uses you to be a blessing. He uses me to be a blessing. 
and he has played, and, and granted, right, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, but you know who's ranching that cattle? Me and you. We're the stewards over it, and yes, there's been abuses. Yes, there's been manipulation, but I'll tell you, when you understand what it is to be a steward over every area of your life, Scripture says you'll be blessed. And we are not that, you know, give to get kind of church mentality. You know, I, I don't preach and teach, nor do I believe if you give your $10, God's going to send you 100 But I do know that when I'm faithful and I'm a steward over the areas of my life, my spiritual areas, my physical responsibilities, God always blesses that faithfulness. You know, there's many that say, oh, you know, I'll give when I win the lottery. I've been asked before, what if somebody plays the lottery? Are you going to take their money? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Scripture says that, uh, that, that uh, which of darkness will be brought to us. But anyway, okay. But if you're waiting for the lottery, you are more likely to be struck by lightning. If you're waiting for the lottery, you are more likely to be killed by a shark. You live in Odessa, y'all. If you are waiting for to win the lottery, you are more likely to be killed by a bee sting. You're more likely to die in a plane crash. You're more likely to become a movie star. You're more likely to become an astronaut. You're more likely in drawing a royal flush in poker. You're more, listen to this, you are more likely to die of sunstroke than you are to win the lottery. Listen to this one. I, I don't know why all these have to do with death, but you are more likely to be killed by a vending machine than to win the lottery. I don't know if that means it like falls on you because you got mad and you kicked it. I don't, I don't know what that means. Listen to what real, Roger, real Will Rogers said. Too many people spend money they earn to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. Anybody ever heard that quote before? Uh, Ralph Emerson, money often costs too much. I really like this one. Please silence your cell phones. Yogi Berra, a nickel ain't worth a dime anymore. And I, I think that's what we really experience, it seems like, more and more and more. But there's so many common approaches to money, what I see in our culture. Here's some common approaches. Spend what I have. If I have it, I'm going to spend it. Because why? I'm going to do what I want. I worked hard. I earned it. I'm going to do what I want with it. Or the I want it now mentality. That gets us in a whole lot of trouble. Or I'll worry about it later mentality because we just put it on the plastic, right? I worked hard. I deserve it. I, I need it. I need it. And the reality is that all of those are wrong. We are to be responsible stewards of what the Lord has blessed us with. And the first guiding principle for my finances is obey. The first guiding principle for my finance is obey. If I want God's blessing in my finances, I have to follow God's instructions. Okay, let me, let me back up. Okay, if, if I want God's blessing in my life, then I have to follow God's instructions. If I want God's blessing in my family, then I need to have a biblical family. Oh, I think it just got real there, didn't it? I mean, it works in every area that we're, how God is working in our life, in us and through us and around us, because God does not bless disobedience. And so Malachi chapter three and verse eight, will a man rob God? Yet you're robbing me, but you say, how have we robbed you? And your tithes and contributions. Verse 9, you are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. 
Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And I, I'm going to talk more about this next week, but listen to me. I mean, I want you to notice in verse 10, it says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse. But there is a reason why that there may be food in my house. Listen, if you want this house to be thriving, if you want this house to be a blessing, if you want this house to bless the Permian Basin and to reach out, reach the world with missions. Let there be bread in the house, y'all. And therefore put me, the only place God ever says this, put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If it will not open, if I will not open a window of heaven for you, pour out for you a blessing until there is no more need. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it, it, it will not destroy the fruits of your soil or your vine in the field shall not, shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Listen, stealing means not only taking what is not yours, I mean, that, right? That's how we define stealing, not, not taking what is not yours, but also keeping for yourself what is somebody else's. You know, the, the scripture tells us you go through scripture and we see it lined out in the Old Testament, right? So many places, this tithe, this, this tenth, and we see it in Numbers 18, a tenth of all the produce as well as flocks, cattle belong to the Lord. What it, where does that tenth belong? It belongs to the Lord. And it goes on to say in verse 24 that these Levites were assigned for their services. So it was to be given so the Levites could accomplish what God intended for their mission. Numbers 18, 21, the Levites, I have given every tithe in Israel an inheritance. I mean, I'm, I'm establishing something here, so follow along with me. In return for their service that they do. Luke chapter 10, verse 7. Let's read something in the New Testament. And remain in the same house. This is when Jesus sends out the 72. And he tells them, remain in the same house, eating and drinking. What? What they provide, what who provides, they, the ones receiving that ministry, for the labor deserves his wages. Nehemiah dealt with the same thing. You can look at it. I'm not going to take the time to read the verses, but if you look in chapter 10, it, you see Nehemiah laying out some things. You can read, you know, read Nehemiah 30 through 37, but I want to point out in 33, for all the work of the house of the Lord, he says, these holy things bring in the sin offerings, the atonement for Israel. Why? For the work of the house of the Lord. Verse 37, and to bring the first of our dough, the first in our contributions, the fruit of every tree, wine, oil, to the priest chambers of the house of God. Why? It says for the Levites to collect for where they labor. And so we see this all through the Old Testament. And it is a, it's a misunderstanding to think that the tithe was only a tenth. You say, wait a minute, Pastor, I know my maths. Well, in the Old Testament, there was the first tithe. And then there was the festival tithe. And then there was the poor tithe. And then there was proprietary offerings. And then there was dedic uh, dedication offerings. And then there was communal offerings. When you look at the law of the Old Testament, they didn't give just a tenth. They gave upwards of 30% to the temple and to the Levites. Y'all are really quiet now. So how did, because a lot of people say, well, tithing's not in the New Testament. It's not seen there. But the process is this. I want you to listen to me. God owns everything and his people are stewards. God owns everything and his people are stewards. Remember what we talked about a second ago, 1 Corinthians 10, 26, the Earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We are to manage the money so his blessings and generosity are not wasted. And gaining money is only possible through him. 
And so we show gratitude in our thanks for God's provision by returning back to his, to him. But giving to God breaks what there, there's something else that it does is that it breaks our love for materialism. I would dare say that most of us, most of us, well, we, we love this stuff right here. You know what this is? It, for, me, well, for me, this is my white flesh. Oh, I love you so much, flesh. Right? We cater to ourselves. And it goes against that fleshly nature inside of us to give, to serve. Right? First Timothy 6, 7. For we brought nothing into the world and cannot take anything out of the world. You know, I've, you've, surely you've heard it that, you know, you've never seen a funeral procession with a U-Haul behind it. First Timothy 6.17, as for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but God who provides us with everything to enjoy. Christians are to give to the church in proportion of God's provision. Instead of asking, see, what we do, how much is required? How much do I have to do? What we should be asking is how much can I do? How much can I give? How much can I serve? 2 Corinthians 9, 6, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Each one must give as he says, decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And so what we see is, and I want to get there in a second, I'm going to come back to the top of this in a second, but we, we see a pattern through Scripture where God really expects all. He expects all. And granted, a tithe is 10%. And I, I know I've joked about this so many times. I've been facetious about it, but the, there is a spiritual principle that we got to understand. You know, so a lot of people complain against, you know, the tithe, but the tithe is just the starting point. I mean, I, I didn't go... I, I can give you the scriptures and all that about, you know, those six areas of giving in the Old Testament that they gave that equated, all, you know, sometimes between 30 and maybe 20 to 30 percent of their of their giving. And so it's even the Old Testament was more than 10 percent. Are you following me? And and when we look at the New Testament, God always raises the standard. He always raises the standard. And so the tenth is where we start. And so I, I got a little, a little, I got a little help here. And and just so you know that this is counterfeit. So, <laughs> this, some of you got maybe got excited. So I I have here some dollars. So I have here, I got here one two three four five six seven. I I got ten ones right here. Ten ones. And so, you know, when I was, when I was running from God and I, I mean, I was a heathen and, um, would have nothing to do with church. Uh, you know what I did? I still tithed because <laughs> that's how my mom raised me. I mean, I still, I, st I I'd, I'd go by the church and I'd give a tithe of my income to the church. Even when I was a heathen, I, I mean, you know, I, I'm not making light of this, but I, I mean, before I did anything that sinners do, I don't even go into detail, do I? I made sure I gave my money to the Lord. And so, but here's, so what is a tenth of 10? Well, it'd be a dollar, right? And so, I mean, that, that's how that math works. That's God's math. I mean, it's all his, right? It's all his. I give a, but I, I give a tenth back to redeem the nine. And so then he says, I'm to be a steward over this nine. Now, kind of what we kind of get into sometimes is here, I got, I got some more dollars. 
is then we get a raise, right? And so then we got a hundred dollars. Oh, I cannot stand it when bills are not facing the right way. That's from my cashier days at Furs. Okay, there we go. So that's we got a hundred. So what's a tenth of a hundred? It's ten dollars. You know, and, and usually what we find is, is when we're in these amounts, you know, it's easy to do. Oh, I can do that. I can give that 10. So if I've got, but if I've got 90 tens and 10 ones, I still got a hundred and I'm like, okay, I'll give to the Lord. And I give the dollar. That's not a 10th. Are you following me? That's not tithing. What tithing is, is to give the 10. And then, man, we start rolling in the big bucks. You know, I was talking to Shaylee this last week and, um, you know, her being in missions and ministry. And I'm like, Shaylee, I was like, you have it. So when I first started in ministry, when I first started my first full-time position, I was making $18,000 a year. And then I got married and I wanted, I wanted to be a provider, and so another opportunity came up, and I didn't do my math very well, and so we went to, a, we went to another church, and I mean, there's a whole story to that, but we go to another church, and man, I, I, when it all came down to it, I got, a, I got a cut because the church hired me and Angela both for $18,000 a year. That's where it all started. <laughs> so here I have 10, 100, now these are real. Because I sold a car. So what's what's a what's a tenth of the thousand? But we're like, ooh, that's a whole lot more than that one dollar, Lord. Well, no, it's actually not. Right? Because it's not in the amount; it's in the obedience. Well, that's that's more than that ten, Lord. But I'll tell you something else. You'll, you, you'll never come to terms with giving that if you don't start with giving that. Does that make sense? And so that's just the minimum of it all, but we see in the New Testament what God says, what happens is that here we are, used to the 10% being the standard, but then we see where God wants it all. He wants it all. And so even we see what the early church did, what the early church do. Man, they started selling stuff, right? They were like, you know, I got two houses. So-and-so needs a house, needs some money. I'm going to sell that house and give the money to the church. I mean, really, they, they, uh, out of their extra, and that's what got Annas and Sapphira in trouble because they lied about it. But you can read that in Acts 2. But the obedience is not in, the, the blessing is not in the amount, it's in the obedience. And that's what it comes down to. You can't tip God like a server. When I choose to disobey, I choose to live life without blessing. And the reality is, is I, you cannot, can't afford not to tithe. And that's where we start. I, you know, and it's amazing to me sometimes so, listen, I, I'm going to uh, maybe a little of a soapbox here, but you know, I, I, I talk to people and, and have conversations, try to bring some discipleship and mentorship and, and, um, you know, they, uh, they need help with rent after they just bought their 80 inch TV. Oh, we're getting real now y'all. Um, or, you know, they're texting me about something and, and, you know, about how broke they are, but they're texting from their brand new $1,200 iPhone. Right? <laughs> I mean, that, that's the truth of it. And we need to be stewards. But just to process, just process this. So a lot of people believe that the tithe and, and the tenth is an Old Testament thing. 
And when you go through, when you look at the New Testament, think of Matthew chapter five. What, do you know what happens in chapter Matthew five? Chapter, Ma, Matthew chapter five is, is a Sermon on the Mount. And so Jesus, he's talking about how to pray, but then he goes into a list of things and he says this. He says that in the, in the Old Testament, I mean, murder is still a sin. That was not the, the point he's trying to illustrate. But he said, you know, in the Old Testament, there's murder. But now the standard's anger. Wait a minute, Lord. You mean when somebody runs a stop sign in front of me and I get mad? In the Old Testament, the standard was adultery. In the New Testament, it's what? It's lust. I, this doesn't sound like it's getting easier. In the Old Testament, divorce was really open, and it was really prevalent. In the New Testament, it's adultery, abandonment, or abuse. He narrows it down. In the Old Testament, you, you weren't to promise or swear, make promise falsely. In the New Testament, you read Matthew 5, let your yes be yes and your no be no. I mean, it doesn't sound like to me that we get in the New Testament and things got easier. In the Old Testament, there was retaliation, right? Eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. Oh, but in the New Testament, it's what? You go the extra mile. If somebody slaps you, what do you do? You turn the other cheek. Or how about the Old Testament? The Old Testament actually says that you can hate your enemies. Some of you right now wish you could still be Old Testament. But the New Testament says, love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you. The New Testament standard in giving is giving all. And we're not talking about just the dime and the dollar. We're talking about all of us. All of us. I may not tithe faithful, but I give so you do faithful disobedience. There's a difference in faithful giving and, and faithful obedience. I believe so, so much in tithing that it, I would think, it, here's how much I believe in tithing, and I've issued this challenge before, and I'm going to issue it again, is if you would commit, if you don't tithe right now, and you would commit to tithe for 90 days, you can write today's date down if you want to start today. You want, if you would be faithful and tithe for 90 days and you don't see a shift or breakthrough in your life, I'll give you back all of your tithe back. I believe that much in it. You know why? Because God says it in Malachi, test me in this. I mean, those of you that have given faithfully, has God ever let you down? Faithful obedience leads to blessings. Faithful obedience, that's the way that we live, our, our stewards of our, our life as a whole. Remember, he says, seek my kingdom and my righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. It's true in relationships, it's true in marriage, it's true in business, it's true in schools. When you obey God's command, you can always expect help. You can always expect help. Listen, I know we're maybe not used to processing or even praying this way, but you look how David prayed. You look through so many of the Psalms and what he recorded. And you, 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 it, when you're walking faithful, the bet, it doesn't mean you're perfect, right? It doesn't mean you always get it right. It doesn't mean that so, there's not times you don't fall short. But when you are, when you are pursuing the Lord in faithfulness and, and stuff goes awry in your life and it, things get turned upside down, I mean, you can recall, Lord, I've, I've been walking faithful. And your word says, are, are, you, are you still with me? Your word says, Lord. I mean, earlier, Angela um, used the scripture of draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. I mean, that's both a command and a promise. The command is what? Draw near to God. The promise is what? He's going to get close to you. Obeying God with money, it really should be 
the easiest obedience. It really should. That should be where it starts. And again, I know, I mean, this is not, you know, I mean, you know, I'm looking towards Easter. I mean, I, I think, th- uh, Lord willing, we're going to look at a series of doing the I am statements of Jesus. And it's going to minister. I think it's going to be powerful. Easter Sunday, I'm going to talk about, he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. But I'm going to tell you, church, we need this. We need this. The, the church doesn't need this. We need this. Why? Because we need the blessings of God in our life. And you know what? There's some of you, you may be, it seems like you're in a cycle and you can't break free. I'm going to tell you, it, it, it seems like the, the debt is just ever increasing. Man, when you begin to walk faithful to the Lord and become a stu- see, being a steward is more than just giving a dollar amount. It's being obedience. But what that does, you realize the importance that you steward everything well. Yeah, he says, you know, that other 90%, I can do whatever I want with that. But why not be a good steward over that as well? Because I I know I may not be the greatest farmer in the world, but there's something I know is that I can go out and I can plow a field. I can prepare the field. I can get the stumps out and the rocks out. I can get the irrigation system ready. I can irrigate and flood and water and water and water and water. But if I haven't planted any seed, I'm just just making mud, y'all. Right? But what has to happen? I've got to put something in the ground. And too many times with our 90%, we eat our seed. We eat our seed. And I'm not here. There is nothing that makes me more angry when I see people on TV, you know, sending, you know, your $10 and you're going to see this miracle or sending this money, you're going to see that miracle. I, I don't think that's the way the Lord operates, but I think we have such an unhealthy view of what it is to be blessed that so many get, take that hook, line, and sinker. But it's not that God's after your money. He's after you. He's after you. He wants you, and he wants all of you. I want to ask you to stand with me this morning. Thanks for joining us on this week's podcast. Be sure to tune in next time for more inspirational messages. Connect with us on social media at Odessa First AG. And if you'd like to support our ministry, visit odessafirstassembly.com forward slash giving. Until next time, stay blessed.